Hey y'all, it's Tracy at Just Dig It Farms. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about elderberries. Elderberries have been used for thousands of years medicinally. Um, the first person to use elderberries was Hippocrates and he even wrote a book about them. He believed that he could cure any ailment with elderberries. They have like just extremely great medicinal properties. Um, they're one of the highest antioxidants on earth. They're one of the strongest anti-inflammatories on earth. They're high in vitamins A, B6, and C. One tablespoon of elderberry syrup is 80% of the vitamin C dosage that you need daily. So it's super high in vitamin C, it's high in minerals, um, it is great to fight off colds and flus and sinus infections and coughs. Um, it builds your immune system. Elderberries just have like so many great medicinal properties to it. So every flu and cold season, every winter, I make us up some elderberry cough syrup. Just, it helps move out free radicals that are in your system and it just helps to keep your immune system built up and it gives you those vitamins and minerals that you need and just helps us to fight off colds and flus and sinus infections. So let's get started making the elderberry cough syrup and the elderberry tincture. These are my elderberries that I harvested this past season from the orchard. Um, I only ended up with three cups this year because I got to them too late. The birds beat me to most of them, but I did end up with three cups and I dried them and have had them stored in my mason jar and it gives me enough to make some elderberry cough syrup and an elderberry tincture. So I've got two cups of dried elderberries here and I've got one cup of dried elderberries here in this mason jar. I'm gonna use this one to make my tincture, and I'm gonna use these two cups of dried elderberries to make my elderberry so The first syrup. step is, if you're using fresh elderberries, so if it's fresh, it's two cups of fresh elderberries and three cups of purified water. If you're using dried, you'll use one cup of dried elderberries and four cups of purified water. So today I've got two cups of dried and I've got eight cups of purified water boiling. I've got it going already. So I'm just gonna pour my, now I doubled my recipe. So I'm just gonna pour my elderberries in here, stir them up really good. Turn the heat down a little bit and let it simmer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this simmer for a long time until about half of the liquid is gone. I'm gonna put a lid over it and I'm gonna let it simmer. I let my elderberry juice simmer for about an hour and 15, 20 minutes or so and then I've let it cool off enough that I can strain it. It's still just a little bit warm. It's warm enough to dissolve the honey that I'm gonna use, but not too warm because the hotter it is, the more of the good properties is dissolved from the honey. So you want it just warm enough to dissolve the honey. So my next step is I have my cheesecloth and a colander and my measure cup here and I'm just going to pour my juice over in to my cheesecloth and strain it and get all the good juice from it. I'm doing this with one hand because I left my tripod in my mother's car and I can't set it up, so I'm having to do this with one hand. Okay, let's see if this will work. So I'm going to get all these good berries out of here because they're still packed full of juice. 
and I want to get all the goodness out of them. That's why I'm using a cheesecloth so that I can squeeze all the juice out of the berries. Okay, then I'm just gonna take my cloth. And this is when your hands get stained up. Just squeeze all the juice that you can get out of them. See, there's still a lot of juice in these berries. And if you've ever harvested your own berries and processed them, then you appreciate getting every ounce of goodness out of them. Now I'm going to put my berries in my compost here. I think I've got all the juice I can get out of them. Put my berries in my compost, let my chickens have some some of that good nutrients. And this cheesecloth, I'm actually gonna save this, but I love the color of it now. I love that color. So I'm gonna use this for something. I don't know what yet, I might use it like in one of my scrapbooks or garden journal or something, but I'm gonna use that because I love the color. I mean, hey, that's where a lot of our dyes come from is from plants, so. I'm gonna wash that and reuse that. And now I've got my beautiful elderberry juice. Okay, once you get your elderberry strained and you're just left with this good elderberry juice, and remember it's still warm enough to dissolve my honey, I'm gonna add one cup of honey. But I doubled my recipe, so I'm gonna add two cups of honey. So one pint equals two cups. So I've got my honey here. And this is, honey from our bees this year from our harvest so this is about as local as you're gonna get right in my yard which is really great to have local honey because the bees are out foraging on flowers and pollens and nectars that you may have allergies to and if you're intaking this honey that was created with the nectar and the pollen and everything from those flowers, then you're naturally building an immune system up to fight against those allergies. That's why you want local honey. And local usually means within 100 miles of you. That's usually considered local. Okay, now I've got my honey in here and I'm just gonna stir it up really, really good till I know it's mixed up really well. Now, when I put my elderberries in my boiling water to simmer, at that point, you could have added cinnamon sticks, cloves, um, some lemon juice, uh, ginger root, um, all these other great things for um, your health. You could have added those things to your, to your simmer pot. But I am going to use, this time I'm going to use my essential oils instead of those things. Honestly, I didn't have any cloves and I, didn't, I was out of cinnamon sticks. So I'm, at this point, I'm going to add my essential oils to this. And the ones that I'm going to add, I'm going to add clove. So clove is great for headache relief, sore throat, sinus pains, earaches, uh, candida, which is a yeast overgrowth in your body, um, sore muscles, nausea and vomiting. It boosts your immune system and it's great for bacterial and fungal infections. So I'm gonna add clove and I'm going to add ginger. Ginger prevents infection. It's good for nausea, it treats cold and flu, it's anti-inflammatory, it's good for digestion, asthma, protects your liver, um, muscle and joint pain, heart and health, it helps detoxify your body. I'm going to add nutmeg. 
Benefits of nut bag is reduces pain and inflammation, muscular joint pain, aids in digestion, um, prevents bladder infections, kills bacteria and viruses. I'm going to add cinnamon. Cinnamon boosts your brain function, improves blood circulation, relieves pain, treats infection, speeds up healing, and relieves relief of arthritis. And I'm going to add thieves. Thieves is a blend. It's a blend of clove, lemon, rosemary, cinnamon, and eucalyptus. And thieves is awesome. It fights 99% of airborne bacteria. It supports respiratory health, digestive health, um, builds your immune system, prevents infections, uh, protection from colds and flus, and reduces phlegm and congestion. And I'm going to add lemon. I'm out of lemon, so I'm going to use citrus fresh. But this relieves nausea, digestion, detoxifies your body, relieves coughing, fever, infections, asthma, and stomach problems. So I'm going to add some of all these oils to my elderberry syrup here that I've made. And this is just going to be like a huge dose of awesomeness. So I'm just going to put about five drops each of these oils, about three to five drops. So I've got all of my oils in here, got it stirred up pretty good. And what I'll do, I'll pour most of it up into this mason jar, put a lid on it, put it in the refrigerator and store it in there. But I'm also going to fill up some of these little bottles. They're little syrup bottles from Cracker Barrel. My mother and father-in-law save them for me every time they go there. And I just fill these up. And it's equivalent to about five tablespoons. Now the recommended dose of elderberry cough syrup is a tablespoon a day just to keep you healthy, two tablespoons a day if you're sick and you're fighting off something. But this is five tablespoons a day and what Jean and I do usually through the winter is just every day, every morning or evening or whatever, we'll just chug about half of this and we just drink about half a day. That's how we do it. That's about two tablespoons a day. Even if we're not sick, that's what we do. And it just keeps our immune system and all built up. So I'll pour up a bunch of these, put them in the refrigerator and we can just grab them and do our half a bottle a day. And I'll pour the rest up in this. And then as we run out of these, I just refill them. And that gets us through. So that's it guys for the elderberry cough syrup. It's super simple, super easy, and it just helps us to fight off all those nasty sicknesses that comes with winter time. Um, also during the spring, I get allergies real bad, so I'll keep using this sometimes during the first part of spring, or I'll use the elderberry tincture just to help me to combat sinus infections. Now I'm going to make my elderberry tincture. Now the elderberry cough syrup will last about a month if it's kept in the refrigerator, but the tincture can last for a couple of years as long as it's stored in like a dark cool place. So I like to always make some tincture. What you're gonna need is like a cup of dried elderberries and um, 80 proof or higher vodka. And all I've done, I've poured, put my cup of elderberries in my pint jar, and I'm just going to pour this vodka over it. Fill it all the way up. Okay. Just put my lid on. This is so easy. The hardest part of this whole thing is harvesting and processing the elderberries. Now that is a task. And I didn't make a video this year when I did it, but next year I will make a video. So then you just screw your lid on really tight and I've put a label on here that tells me today's date when I made it and then it's elderberry tincture. And I'm going to store this in a very cool, dark place. 
and um, for about six weeks, four to six weeks, and I'm just gonna come in and shake it up every day. But then you're gonna come in and strain all your berries off and then you're left with your elderberry tincture. I'm gonna store this in my honey cabinet. Y'all look at my honey cabinet, how cute it is. I got this from Vintage Pick and Barn Sale in Fife, Alabama. They have it twice a year. They have a spring one and a fall one. And I got this cute cabinet there. It was this baby blue color and old, old uh, pantry cupboard. And um, I just put a little chalk paint over the baby blue, put on some new hardware, painted the inside of it. And this is my honey cabinet and where I store some of our canned vegetables and jams and jellies and stuff. So I'm just gonna put my elderberry tincture in here. It'll be cool and dark. We don't open this very much, so that's it. The recommended dosage on the tincture is a tablespoon three to four times a day if you're sick, and then just a tablespoon a day just to stay healthy, just as a healthy regimen. So that's it. That is my recipe for the elderberry cough syrup and the elderberry tincture. And I hope you guys give it a try. If you do, let me know if you're already using uh, elderberry as a plant medicine. Let me know about it. I love to talk plant medicine. I love to know who all is making their own medicine with plants and herbs. Um, I just love to talk plant medicine. So if you are, or if you try this recipe, let me know, send me a comment and let me know. I'd love to know about it. Okay guys, I hope you have a healthy, happy, wonderful winter and holiday. God bless.